Okay, we've said there are three types of stationary point, minimum, maximum, and point of inflection. But how do we tell what type of stationary point that we have when we get that the gradient is zero? So the first method we're gonna look at is you can just look at the gradient just before and just after the point that we're in question of. So if it is this first one, a local minimum, we're gonna think about what the gradients look like. Well, at the minimum point, the gradient is going to be completely flat. So the gradient at the minimum is going to be flat. And we would say that at that minimum point, dy by dx is actually equal to zero. But if you go just after the point, maybe to this bit here, we can see that the gradient is going to be sloping upwards. And so we can say that the gradient dy by dx is positive. And just before that point, you can see that it's sloping downwards. So we would say that the gradient function dy by dx is negative because it's sloping downwards. So if you get that kind of U shape from those three gradients, then you know it's a minimum. Now, the maximum is going to be pretty similar, but just the other way around. So we get zero in that middle point where dy by dx is actually going to be equal to zero. Just beforehand, the gradient is going to be positive. So dy by dx is going to be positive. And just afterwards, you can see it will be starting to slope downwards. So dy by dx is going to be less than zero. It's going to be negative. And then for the point of inflection, again, it's going to be zero at the point of inflection, POI, point of inflection. So dy by dx is equal to zero. Just beforehand, it looks like it is positive. So dy by dx is positive. And just afterwards, it also looks like it is positive. So we get that dy by dx is positive. So you get this kind of these shapes that are here. So that one you can see you've got these three shapes, looks like a maximum. These three shapes looks like a point of inflection. And these three shapes looks like a minimum. Just a quick side note with the point of inflection, you could also have it so that the gradient before and after was negative like this. So you got that kind of shape. But the main thing is you get either that sort of um, upwards curve, upwards S or downwards sort of S shape. I've just done one as this example of it going up the page. You could quite easily have a point of inflection of it coming down the page like this instead. So that's how you tell what type of stationary point it is. Uh, and it's going to make more sense when we try it out with an example. So let's find the stationary point of this curve with this equation and determine whether it is a local maximum, a local minimum, or a point of inflection. Now, from your knowledge of different graphs, you should be able to tell me that this is a positive quartic. And we know that positive quartics have this shape. So hmm, it's gonna we're going to try and find out, is it? Could it be this point? Could it be this point? Could it be this point? What's it going to be? So let's actually use the method and see what happens. We're going to find a stationary point. In other words, dy by dx has got to be equal to zero. So if y is x to the power of four minus 32, then d minus 32 x, sorry, then dy by dx is going to be four x cubed minus 32. We're going to make that equal zero. So four x cubed minus 32. And have 32 equals 4x cubed. 32 divided by 4 is equal to 8. And so x is just going to be the cube root of 8, which is 2. Now, it can't be plus or minus 2 here because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 isn't 8. It's minus 8. So it's just going to be 2. Now, um, all we need to do is find the gradient just before and just after. Oh, hang on a second. Stationary point. I need to get the y coordinate. So if x is 2, y is going to be 2 to the power of 4 minus 32 times 2. Let's just quickly do that on my calculator. Um, 2 to the power of 4 minus 32 times 2, and we get minus 48. So the coordinate of the stationary point is 2 minus 48. I'm now going to test the gradient. So we know if this is our x value and then this is our dy by dx, when x is 2, dy by dx is 0. So I'm going to try one just before. I'm going to try one at 1.99, and I'm going to be substituting it into this one that I've got here. I'm, I'm going to be putting it into dy by dx equals 4x cubed minus 32. Now, there's no point in putting 2, because we know that that already gives us 0. So I'm going to do 4x cubed minus 32. So that's 4x cubed minus 32. And you can see here we get minus 0 0.477, minus 0 
seven, blah, blah, blah. And when we put in, I don't know, a little bit bigger than two, let's put in 2.01. So I'm gonna change that to 2.01. We get 0 0.48 something, 0 0.48 dot, dot, dot. Let's just put some lines in here to make it clear that they're all different. So to begin with, the gradient is negative. Then it's zero, then it's positive. So this shows, this shows us that the coordinate to minus 48 is a minimum. So that's x to the power of four minus 32x y equals x to the power of 4 minus 32x and i'm gonna zoom so that i can see a little bit better about what's going on here with this weird kind of shape and we said that it is 2 minus 48 and clearly that is a minimum that we have on this one so let's go back well, there's a second way that you can find out what the type of stationary point is as well. You can use the second derivative. And this is why we looked at the second derivative earlier. So how, to, how do we tell what type of stationary point it is? Method two, using the second derivative. The method of substituting values of x just before and after is a bit cumbersome, it's a bit messy. It also has the potential has potential problems. What if two different types of stationary points are really close together? It might start getting a bit confusing about what values you should, should be substituting in. So this method is a lot quicker, but it doesn't always work perfectly. So here I've said, recall, the gradient gives a measure of the rate of change of y. In other words, how much the y value changes as the x value changes. So when you differentiate the gradient function, the second derivative tells us the rate at what the gradient is changing. Just stop there for a second. The differentiate the second derivative is telling us how the gradient is changing. The first derivative is telling us how y is changing. The second derivative is telling us how the gradient is changing. And so I'm going to explain these bits here, but we've said if the second derivative is positive, then the gradient is increasing. And if the second derivative is negative, then the gradient is decreasing. Positive, increasing, negative, decreasing. So in this example that we've got here, I've clearly got a maximum point. And as we go across on this one, as we're moving across the page, you can see that we have a positive gradient, then a zero, a zero gradient, and then a negative gradient. So we have got something that is starting as positive, then it's becoming zero, then it's becoming negative. Overall, in this journey, we can see that the gradient is decreasing. And if the gradient is decreasing, we are saying that the second derivative is less than zero. Less than zero means that something is decreasing. So let's read the text that goes alongside this. At this maximum point, we can see that as x increases, as we move across the curve, the gradient is decreasing from a positive to a zero to a negative. In other words, the rate of change of the gradient is negative. It is becoming more negative. So the whole thing is negative like this. And similarly, if we had a curve that was this shape, we can see that it has a negative gradient, then a zero gradient, then a positive. It's going from negative to zero to positive. Overall, we would say that the gradient is increasing. And so for a minimum point, the second derivative is going to be greater than zero. Okay, I'm just gonna see if I can keep that separate so it doesn't get in the way of the other stuff. So here is what I've got written. I'm just doing it in the Lagrange notation this time. If we have a stationary point where x is equal to a, if the second derivative is positive, then the point is a local minimum. Here, if the second derivative is positive, it is a minimum. If the second derivative is negative, the point is a maximum. Here is the second derivative being negative, and it referred to this point, which is a maximum. If the second derivative is zero, it could be any type of point. So you will need to resort to method one, which is this stuff that we had up here. 
Now, how do I remember this? Because sometimes people struggle to remember this. This is the way that I imagine this. I imagine being at the maximum or the minimum. So I imagine literally standing on this graph right at the top. And if I was stood at the top of this hill, everywhere that I would look, I would be looking downwards. And looking downwards is negative. So at this point here, the second derivative is negative. Or the second derivative at this value a is negative. So that is why we've got a maximum. I'm just going to highlight this bit here. I'm talking about in yellow. There it is as a local maximum. And then I'll do this one here in blue. I imagine standing at the bottom of this valley shape that we've got here. And if I was stood at the bottom of that valley, everywhere I would look, I would be having to look upwards. And looking upwards is when the second derivative, upwards makes me think of positive, is going to be that everything is greater than zero. The second derivative is greater than zero. Or f double dash of a is greater than zero. And clearly this one here is a minimum. I should have really said... This is a minimum, this one's a maximum. And so when I highlight this one here in green for the minimum, you can see how it's referring to that minimum point that we've got there. And if it's equal to zero, we have to go back and use method one. So let's have a go at this one here. We're gonna find the coordinates of the stationary points on this curve, and then we're gonna use the second derivative to determine the nature of these stationary points. When it says determine the nature, it means are they a minimum? Are they a maximum? Are they a point of inflection? It means find out what they are. So our equation is y equals 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 24x plus 6. So I'm going to differentiate it to find the coordinates of the stationary points first. So 2 times 3 is 6. It's going to be 6x squared minus 30x plus 24, and that 6 is going to go. So because it's stationary, dy by dx is 0. In other words, 6x squared minus 30x plus 24 is 0. And you're going to use your calculator to solve that. So I'm going to put my 6, my minus 30, and my 24. My values of x from the calculator are 4 and 1. Now, when x is equal to 4, y is going to be equal to, I'm just going to substitute 4 into this equation, okay? So I'm going to do two brackets, 4 cubed minus 15 times 4 squared, oh, damn it, minus 15 times 4 squared plus 24 times 4 plus 6, and so I have minus 10. And I'm going to just go back in and I'm going to replace all of those 4s with 1s. And so I get that y is equal to 17. So I've got these stationary points are at 4 minus 10 and at 1, 17. But now what I want to do is to determine the nature of them. So I'm now going to differentiate this again. I'm going to find the second derivative. So I'm going to do d2y by dx squared. And I'm going to differentiate this expression that I have here. So the 6 times the 2 will give me 12x. And then the minus 30x is just going to become minus 30. And then the 24 is just going to go. So when x is equal to 4, the second derivative is going to be equal to 12 times 4 minus 30, that's 48 minus 30, which is 18, and 18 is greater than 0. Hence, the coordinate 4 minus 10, well, if they're greater than 0, are you going to be looking up or down? Greater than 0 means looking up, so you're at the bottom of the valley, which it means it is a minimum. So it's because you're looking up in this green part. Now we're going to find out the next one. When x equals 1, the second derivative is going to be 12 times 1 minus 30. 12 minus 30 is minus 18, which is clearly less than 0. Hence, 1, 17. If you imagine being stood on a point, if everywhere you're looking has negative gradient, if everything is going downwards, then that means you are at a maximum. Let's just confirm that if the second derivative is negative, it is a maximum. And so 
what I'm going to do is put this on Desmos and show you how this one goes. So it's 2, minus 15, 24, and 6. Two minus fifteen, twenty four, and six, and we've got these stationary points. We had, oh dear, have I done that one wrong? Let me just check if I t oh I didn't put the x in. I knew something had gone wrong because I didn't have the right points. So let's just stretch this out so I can see what I want a little bit better. Okay, we've got the coordinate 117, and we said that's a maximum, and 4 minus 10 is a minimum. So we've got those two points, 4 minus 10 is a minimum, and 117 is a maximum. If we're being really fussy, we should say this one is a local minimum, and this one is a local maximum, but you won't lose any marks for that in the exam. Okay, one more video, which is about sketching graphs, and then we're nearly done for this part.